Hi, I'm Mike Danseglio, and I'm going to show you a little bit of information and a couple of demonstrations on how to protect USB drives in Windows. Get a lot of questions on protecting data while it's on these USB drives in motion and so forth. And so there are some interesting points to understand about why you might want to protect this data. And then I'll get right into some demonstrations of easy and quick ways to actually implement strong data protection. First, I'll cover the basics of why you want to protect your data. I'll keep that pretty quick. And then I'll explain why some of the commercial solutions out there, both hardware and software, are not as effective as they could be or as you might want them to be. And then I'll show you my favorite built-in tool for Windows called BitLocker, and specifically BitLocker to Go, that I recommend and I use to protect data. So first of all, you should definitely already be aware that Data is everywhere. It grows every day. It gets more valuable every day. There's entire industries that base their value on the value of the data they hold, not the assets or the buildings or the computers or the people, but really just the information and data. And as the value of data grows, certainly the storage grows. Companies retain data indefinitely for years, decades, pretty much forever. And the capacity for storing that data has certainly grown as well. Not long ago, data capacity in a portable medium was defined by floppy disk capacity or zip disk capacity, potentially. But that's actually grown quite a bit. And you're probably aware of USB drives and the fact that they can hold enormous amounts of data. So let me show you what that means. It means that this data that's retained forever winds up more and more often able to fit on portable devices like USB drives, a thumb drive. Uh, very common now to see 8 gig, 16 gig, even 32 and 64 gigabyte USB thumb drives that weigh half an ounce, maybe an ounce, don't cost very much, and enable scenarios like taking enormous amounts of data home or on vacation, back and forth to work to different remote locations and so forth, working from home at a coffee shop or a diner, that kind of thing. So the data that's extremely valuable and potentially very sensitive because the more data that gets collected, the more likely it is to be sensitive or problematic if it's lost or stolen. As this data grows and becomes more valuable, it's also moving around. It's not just on a mainframe at the office or on a server at the office. It's pretty much everywhere. So as people run around with data on their USB drives, they're going to potentially lose these things. They're really small. I'm holding one in my hand right now. It's about an inch long. I can barely tell the weight. And in my pocket, it's pretty much going to disappear. So I may leave it at an airport or at a Starbucks, that kind of thing. Well, what happens? Right now, I hear a lot of this kind of quote about, I lost my thumb drive. It was cheap. It was old. And so users typically just don't think twice about losing drives. They may have deleted files. They may have not deleted files. But because of the lack of expense and the ease of loss, they tend to not report these losses to IT at all. Or if they do, it's relatively rare that they do. And so to protect this scenario for, or prevent this scenario from happening and to protect the user and the company from this kind of data loss, there's a lot of great solutions out there. Unfortunately, most of them have drawbacks. So while they do have a lot of strengths, there's a lot of software-based solutions that are strong in that they have great cryptography and they're uh, relatively straightforward to use and can really lock down USB drives. They may require, in fact, they almost always require widespread deployments and operations they are frequently bug prone because of the way they have to hook into Windows to protect the drive cautiously. They have to hook very deeply into the Windows system, which means that any bug at all provides a fairly likely chance that it's going to destabilize the entire operating system or certainly just the drive itself. And frankly, software can be worked around. I've worked in a lot of environments where they had software solutions deployed and users that didn't want to use them simply found another way. Because the harder it is and the more uncomfortable it is, the more likely users are to find something else. There are also some hardware-based solutions. 
And while these are actually really effective, and I do tend to like these, they tend to be more expensive per unit, where a USB drive might cost five or ten dollars in a standard configuration. A USB drive that has hardware-based encryption, maybe uh, an iron key or a device with a, a pin pad on it, might cost more like forty, fifty, seventy-five, or a hundred dollars for a similar capacity. And that's not always necessarily the bad choice, but it does get expensive. The loss of it does get quite expensive because losing one of those is almost, if you think about it, about a quarter of a laptop. That's a lot of money to lose. And they can be circumvented as well. People simply won't use them. They'd rather substitute in another drive or find a way to copy from one to the other. And there are ways to do it. So how do we protect data on USB drives? My personal recommendation for protecting portable data is using Windows BitLocker to go. I really like Windows BitLocker to go. It's whole volume encryption, not just file-based protection like encrypting file system or EFS. So it protects an entire drive letter. It's built right into Windows 7, which is nice. That means Microsoft tested the living heck out of it before it went out. And it's actually pretty darn stable. It works pretty well. And it's relatively performant. It's pretty fast. It doesn't really slow down the drive once the drive has been configured, unless there's really, really big files. And certainly that will always be the case, no matter what solutions out there. But performance-wise, it's negligible. The stability is certainly worth it. And it's very manageable. And I'd actually like to show you both the client side, the Windows 7 client side of that solution, as well as the Windows Server 2008 policy control of Windows BitLocker to go right now. All right. So I've switched over to Windows 7. And Windows 7, you can see here, I've got the computer window up, and it's got two portable drives. Got an unprotected drive here and a protected drive here. I'd like to actually show you the protection method for drives first. I'd like to show you applying the security. Then I'll show you what it looks like when the drive is actually protected. So all that we do here is click, right click and choose turn on BitLocker. And Windows is going to scan the drive. It's going to make sure that there's enough space, that the right configuration is there, that it can actually turn on BitLocker. And in a relatively short amount of time, it's going to ask me, what do I want to do with this drive? Or how do I want to unlock it? How do I want to protect it? Typically, most users want to use a password to unlock the drive. So I'll click use a password and I'll type a password. Now, I will say that I get a lot of questions about what kind of password should I use? Should I use a super long password? Should I use a short password? Should I use the same password as a Windows password? I'll actually show you how, as an administrator, you can configure that when I show you the Windows server side of things and the group policy changes. For now, I'll just use a fairly basic password, hopefully one that I'll remember in a few minutes so I can decrypt it or even get into it again. If I have smart cards deployed in my enterprise, I can certainly use smart card to unlock as well. When I click next, it will ask me whether I want to save the recovery key on a file or print it or both. This is configurable. I can, as an administrator, I can choose which one to do, or I can actually choose to not prompt the user and save it somewhere else. But Windows does require us to save the key somewhere. That's because this is real hardcore cryptography in that if we don't have the password or whatever I just specified on the previous window and we don't have a key to get it open, that data is gone. It's protected and it can't be recovered. Once I've clicked start encrypting, you'll actually see the drive will go to gray and then it will look just like this drive when it's done. This drive I've already configured with BitLocker and when I double click it, I get prompted for BitLocker Drive Encryption Password. I can show password characters. I can automatically unlock, which caches the password in the protected store. These are, again, both configurable with group policy. And I can type the password. I should mention, of course, that this isn't just software on the drive itself. This is actually software built into Windows. So if I take this drive, this USB drive, and stick it into another machine running Linux or Mac OS or some other uh, Android, perhaps, 
it's going to be encrypted anyway. It's still going to be encrypted because this is volume-based encryption and there's no software tool to pop open on those platforms. And once I click unlock, the icon will change from the gold padlock to the silver padlock, which shows that the drive is unencrypted and I can get to it. That's how the client works. The reason I didn't start encrypting this drive here, if you noticed a moment ago, is that it just takes a few moments because it actually does encrypt. BitLocker will encrypt the entire drive, not just a couple of files. Or if it's if there's no files on there, many administrators think no files equals two minutes or two seconds of encryption. That's simply not the case. The drive is still being encrypted because this is volume-based encryption. So it will still take just as long. Now I'm going to switch over to Windows Server 2008 and show you the administration of this. Alrighty. Well, we're back in Windows, Windows Server 2008 R2, in fact. And I've taken the liberty of bringing up Group Policy Management Editor. I created a new group policy, and I navigated down through computer policies, administrative templates, Windows templates, and into the BitLocker Drive Encryption node here. And BitLocker Drive Encryption node, in and of itself, at the parent level, at this top parent level of BitLocker Drive Encryption, there are several options that you can configure to actually change how BitLocker works. Most interestingly, really, is the Drive Encryption method and cipher strength. This is what BitLocker uses to protect the data itself, the, the key length, uh, 128 versus 256 bit, the algorithm that's used and so forth. The nice thing about this is not so much that you have to worry about which algorithm to choose because Microsoft has chosen pretty strong algorithms to begin with, but that as time goes on and different algorithms are developed, they can be plugged into BitLocker and BitLocker to go, and you can actually configure those with longer key lengths or different algorithms to protect based on regulatory compliance or based on regional compliance, that kind of thing. Even more interestingly, I think, is the removable data drives option within BitLocker Drive Encryption. And this is where, as an administrator, we can configure whether drives are required to be BitLockered, whether users can actually install BitLocker on removable media drives and so forth, what kind of passwords can be used, and my personal favorite, we don't have time to go through all of these, but this one is particularly interesting, the Choose How BitLocker Protected Removable Drives Can Be Recovered. Because you don't, as an administrator, want users to lose their data all the time, and they frequently will, you want to have the option to actually go in here and recover the drive when they lose their password or when they lose their key in whatever way to get into the drive. You want the option to actually recover that data. And so a lot of companies, as they're deploying BitLocker to go, they enable this policy, they enable a data recovery agent, and they store the BitLocker information in Active Directory. This does require a schema extension for Windows Server 2008 R2, even domains, even pure domains. It does require a schema extension in order to allow that data to be installed or to be stored, rather, in Active Directory. But once this is configured and done, the beauty of this solution is that all of the recovery keys for BitLocker to go drives are now stored in one place. It's in Active Directory. You can configure who has access, when they have access, how many people are required, and so forth. You can potentially purge it if you need to. And access is pretty darn straightforward. At least you know where it always is instead of worrying about did they print it or did they save it? Where did they save it? Did they save it on their desktop? That kind of thing. This is a really great solution. It does take a tiny bit of work to get configured, but in my opinion, very well worth it. I do suggest you take a look at all of these options under BitLocker Drive Encryption and most especially under the removable data drives, both the configure passwords and the recovery options. All right, so now I think we've really hit home on the importance of protecting uh, data on portable drives, especially USB drives. The fact that it's going to happen, users are going to put data there, whether it's authorized or unauthorized, and we need to get in front of the problem as IT and protect that data the best way possible without inhibiting work or preventing functionality. 
There are a lot of great hardware solutions and software solutions out there. In my experience, the drawbacks typically outweigh the benefits, except for BitLocker to go, which I really do like in terms of its manageability and its stability, and also its ease of use and simplicity. Thanks very much for watching.